right, so let me do this and let me share my screen with you all. All right, we got a couple people in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get busy. Last night we had a, um, a pretty good stream. I think we had a pretty good stream uh, last night, and um, as, as I said last night, we're to the point where we're sprinting now. We're sprinting. Who don't? Is there anybody in here don't who don't know what I mean when I say we sprinting? Everybody understand what I mean when I say I'm sprinting? If you understand, either say yes or put a one in the chat. If you understand what I mean when I say we sprinting now. I don't hear nothing and I don't see nothing. I know it ain't no delay in Discord. Okay. All right. All right. No, what do you mean by it? Okay. All right, Kashaya. What I mean by we're sprinting now is that um, we've been we've been learning these concepts for a while, and in the past, what I would do is just kick the little baby birds out the nest. Throw back gang gang notice. I just kick the little baby birds out the nest, go cold turkey, and be like, "Hey, go figure it out," right? But um, everybody don't don't take well or learn well with that type of methodology. So now what I do is I like force, try to force the, the, the gang gang into applying what we do. Like I force the class participation. I force you look, what do you see here? Tell me what's going on here. What's happening here? Why would we do this? Why? Cause we sprinting. We at the point where we done learned all we need to learn. Right. We started, we started off crawling. Then we started walking. You know what I'm saying? Now we, we jump straight past the run to a sprint. We sprinting. Now it's time to get to the finish line. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing this a long time, so now we need to force ourselves into applying what we're learning. Right? I ain't a I I I ain't no financial advisor, so I can't teach nobody how to trade. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I can do is share my understanding of the concepts and then help you pound it into your head. So that now you understand how to apply it, right? Because you can learn all day long, but if you don't understand how to apply it, you're never going to be um, profitable, right? So that's what I mean when I say we sprinting. We at the point where we done learned all we need to learn. Now we need to um, figure out how to apply it. Do that make sense? Uh <laughs> yes, but I'm definitely not sprinting. My W two is taking up way too much of my time. Hey, hey, hey! I had a W two, right? I had a W two, and I, I, I made the sacrifice of doing it during the Asian time. Meaning, once I came, I, I worked from eight to four thirty, right? Once I got off at four thirty. Did what I had to do with the boys. I would I would get on my charts during the Asian, and I would you know what I'm saying four tests on the Asian. I would back test like the New York session and the Asian session to see if it all was playing out the same, and then I would four test on the Asian, meaning watch price during the Asian, and then start um I started trading the Asian. You know what I'm saying? And that I cut my teeth on the Asian. So it's like I had to make the sacrifice of working 8 to 4 30, doing my family stuff, and then doing my trading at night. Right? So it's like we sprinting, baby. We sprinting. We ain't we ain't making no excuses. We sprinting. If if this what you want to do, if you want to be a part of this, like this right here, it ain't even got to be where you leave your job. If you understand how these concepts work, you can apply it to all forms of trading and investing. So you don't even have to want to leave your job to um, get these concepts and, and apply them to your um, trading and, and, and investing strategies. Right. So, um, yeah, we sprinting now. Right. So everybody clear on what we mean by we sprinting. So 
since we talked about we sprinting last night we was talking about um during the live stream was talk about how to um how to um apply it right and who who remember what we said last night right who remember what we said last night um about what you want price to do going into your um session going into your session going into your trading window going into whatever what do you want price to do prior to right what do you, what did we say last night what do we want price to do that's a question Engage liquidity. Before it engaged the liquidity, what you wanted to do before in it engage like inside your session, you wanted to engage the liquidity, but before that, what do you want it to do before that? Um, establish a dealing range. Establish a dealing range, exactly. You want to see price established a dealing range, right? Okay. So looking at my chart here, right? Looking at my chart here, I know I got a lot going on on the chart, right? But let's go to the top. All right, you want to start off TDA, right? Top down analysis, right? What you want to do, you want to start at the top, right? I like to start with the for my entry date, like for the for if I'm doing my weekly chart prep, I start at the month. But for my entry date, I already started at the month back on Sunday or Saturday, whenever I did my charts. So for my entry day, I like to start at the daily and get my key levels, right? Get my key levels for the daily, right? And then work my way down. Okay, so um, I start with the daily. All right, this is today. This is yesterday, right? Okay. Do anybody, uh, somebody take a stab at there are, I'm going to give you a clue. I'm well, I'm gonna give you the number, right? There are I need to shrink this up so so we can see here. Okay. There are four. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Yes, there are four, <clears throat> there are four daily levels on the chart right now that I have as a focal point of I want to see how price reacts to them. Can anybody, some, not anybody, can any, somebody unmute and start to give me, give me either one of the four or all four of them if you see them, right? There are four, and one of the biggest clues was like when I said, let me squeeze this up, right? So, give me um and now all four of them aren't marked only two of them <clears throat> only two of them are marked on the chart right now so those right there you, you should be able to give me those off the rip and unless you can't see the the um the the um letters over there but somebody hi of the day say again hi of the day uh no nah, not the high of the day uh, hi of the previous day Mm -mm, not higher the previous day. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Let me let me let me start off like this right here. Right before we do that. Okay. So where we are on the daily chart, right? Right. This is where we are on the daily chart. Okay. We can look at it there, or we can look at it here. Right. Let's look at it here. Right where we are on the daily time frame, okay. So based off where we are on the daily time frame, what should we be looking to do? That's a question. Mark buy side and sell side. No, I'm saying what should what what should be when we're trying to enter based off where we are. Right now, what should we be trying to do? Should we be um, trying to enter long or short? Um, if we sure. want, if we want to trade, <clears throat> if we want to trade with the um, higher time frame bias, right? Based off where we are now, 
Long. Yes, Kashaya, long. We should be looking to trade long. And why is that? Do you understand why that is? Who is that talking? Kim? Who is that talking? Yes. Was that Kim? It was do, you under, do you understand why we should be looking to trade long? Because it's, um, it hasn't taken out liquidity and it's headed up. Um, you're thinking too deep. Look at what I got. Oh. Can you see my screen? Yes. Right? So... When I whenever I whenever I do this right here and put that line there, do you, do you remember what that is? It's a buy model. It's in yes. a buy model. We're on the buy model. And what side of the buy model are we on? The buy, uh, right, right side. side. Yes, we're on the buy side of the buy model, right? So anytime, whatever your higher time frame is, if you're on the right side of the model, if you want to trade with the higher time bias, you should be looking to trade in the direction of whatever that is if it's a sell model you should be looking to sell if it's a buy model you should be looking to buy if you're on the right side of the market maker buy model or market maker sell model okay so looking at where so whenever i say looking at where we are in price what should we be looking to do that's what i'm asking what side of the model are we on right and if we're on the right side the higher time frame we should be looking for a reason to buy now we can't and this, like y'all hear me say all the time you can trade against the grain but those trades are going to be shorter lived than the ones where it's going with the bias right so if you're if you're looking for a short on this side you're looking to hold it for a shorter period of time than you are looking to hold the longs you see what i'm saying so like on a daily time frame if you decided, okay, I want to short at this high, right? You shouldn't be looking to try to come all the way back down here, right? Because price has already showed you that this is a balanced price range and it doesn't want to go down there, right? You should just be looking for like a quick scalp somewhere on these daily candles. You would be buying, if you bought puts here, you wouldn't be trying to hold these puts to down there, right? It'll be one of the things where you bought calls in this fair value gap and looking to hold them to that high right taking a little bit off there you know what i'm saying taking a little bit off inside that fair value gap you're gonna hold it longer if you're on the right side of the model and you're buying or selling based off the higher time frame okay everybody clear on that okay so since we're on the right side of the market maker buy model we're looking for reasons to buy Okay. All right. Now, going back to what um, we talked about, since so we're looking for reasons to buy, right? Where are our anticipatory reactionary points going to be? If we're looking to buy, where are our anticipatory reactionary points going to be? All right. We're looking to buy. That's your clue there. We're looking to buy. So where are our anticipatory reactionary points going to be? Would it be the weekly high and up to that bearish fair value gap? Mm -mm. I'm just asking. Don't worry about what's on the screen. I'm just asking a question. Where are your... Um, Low price. Yes. And a discount. And a discount. Very good. Right. So your anticipatory reactionary points are going to be in a discount because you're looking to buy. Right. Remember, buy that. That that was your clue. Where do we buy? We buy in a discount. Where do we sell? We sell in a premium. Right. So if price, if the higher time frame is bullish and you say, hey, I'm only going to trade with the bias of the higher time frame. So you're looking to buy because we're in a um, we're in a um, buy model. We're on the right side of a buy model. We're over here, right? So the the the, the I hate to say safer because you can't trade against the grain, but the the higher probability trades are going to be in the um, direction of the higher time frame bias. Okay, so now with all that being said, where are my daily keep start giving give me some day uh i said it was four that i had on my chart if you see more than four that's fine but the four that's important to me 
at this time. I only have two of them marked because I got a bunch of stuff on my chart. And the other two, I'm just keeping a mental note of, right? But can somebody give me, right, what they think the um, um, four are? Let me go do this for a second because I got a lot of junk on here. And I only want this to show where it's supposed to show. I don't want that to show there. 15 minute. I want this to show here. This to show here. There's a bunch of junk on the screen right now. clean it up a little bit and then let me do some other stuff to help make sure y'all can I know my um, fonts be small and a lot of times you can't see what's going on on the chart so I'm trying to make these So that we can see, make sure y'all can see everything. Okay, so now <clears throat> where uh, one, 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 two, three. Four. Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. I'm listening, y'all. Somebody. Now that we got everything established on what we're supposed to be doing, we know where our anticipatory reactionary points are going to be on the daily chart. What are um, some of the four daily um, PD arrays that I was looking at? Because I want to see how they react, how price react to them. I already told y'all two of them on the chart. <laughs> so you got a cheat sheet. The city, city. Oh. The city at the top, the weekly uh, fair value there. That's from my weekly um, analysis. I'm just, uh, I'm saying that like the daily. Now, we already said <laughs> discount. We already said discount, right? We already said discount, so we're not looking up here. The anticipatory reactionary point is going to be below price, right? It's going to be below price. So, so would it be the consequent encroachment of that daily wick? Yes. The volume consequent, imbalance. Consequent encroachment of yesterday's wick, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at I'm not looking at this Is, new day opening gap right here because Oh, that's a new day. Okay. okay. Yeah, same thing, volume imbalance, new day opening gap. I'm not looking at that right there because um I have this. This is this is the um first one, right? This is the first one, right? And then we already know we mark out the daily high and low just off rip right so you got you got a daily low down there but i want to see what it does with this right here um first you see what i'm saying so we got a we got a daily consequent encroachment that's the first thing we're looking at before this daily low right because this is yesterday's wick so going below price we're looking at how does price, if we get down to this um, consequent encroachment, how does price react there, right? And then once we get there, right, then you want to know, okay, let's back up. 
Consequent encroachment of daily wit. That's where we start at right there. The prior day. Now, what else? If we opened up here, if price opened here, what else can be a factor in that? Right? What's the other one that's on the chart already marked? That's already there. Right. This is the first one I'm looking at because it's the closest to price right now. Right? Closest to price right now. Right. What else is below the opening price that's already marked on the chart? That's a daily level. Is right. it the C below? Yes, the C below. Right here. That C B right there. Right? That C B right there. Over here. This is the C B over here. I don't have the whole C B marked out because I have the rest of that weekly fair value gap. That we had traded up into, right? If you remember, this right here, this is the entire weekly fair value gap that we had traded up into a couple weeks ago, right? And then we still have that portion left. That's how I got it marked, right? And then if we go to our daily, okay, this is the daily SIBI right here. Right, that's the daily SIBI right there that we had traded up into and then wick back down and then we traded back up into it and closed inside of it. And then yesterday we closed inside of it again. So I want to see how price reacts to that level. OK, now. Those are the two that's on the screen right now. And those are the two that. I'm putting the most weight on and I'll explain that in a minute. But whenever we have a um, discount or premium PDA rate, right? When you see when price trades to it, what do you want to know? What what do you want to see what price can do when it gets here? Right. How what? How would when price gets when price opens here and gets to that Sibby low, right? If it trades down to that Sibby low, you want to know how what? How much what can price do at that PDA rate? At this PDA rate? At this PDA rate? At this PDA rate? Once price gets there, you want to know how much what can price do hmm hmm if i'm coming down to this new day opening gap and i'm anticipating it to support price right what do i want to know about this fair value gap can price do what how much it's going to dig into it where it closes? Not, not only dig into it, but how much it's going to do what? Not just dig into it, but... Is it going to run through fast or lethargic or... Mm -hmm. No, nah. the digging is the dig. You're on the right path, right? Once you get there, you want to know how much... Is it going to be support? How? What am I doing? This is my level right here, right? When it gets uh -huh. to this level, you want to oh, know. Oh, it going, going through, through it. it. Yeah, going through it, but what? How? How fast? How much is this place been? No. It ain't, it ain't got how far below oh, how it far can go. Okay. Right? Remember when we talk about this is the draw right here, right? If that's the draw, right, the first thing we want to know is what's in the way that's stopping us and what's above it that we can draw to beyond right we're always looking this is my anticipatory reactionary point but how far beyond it can price stretch right and we identify that by what pd arrays that's resting below or above it on this time frame and on higher time frames and on lower time frames. 
the higher time frames are going to take precedence. So if this is a daily level that I'm watching and there's a weekly level down here, I'm going to be very cautious. I'm going to wait to price show me what it want to do at this daily level because there's a weekly level down here. All right. When it gets to that daily level, if there's another daily level below it, then I want to identify that and I want to see how price reacts to it when it gets there. Right. So this right here. Right. This right here is the first one that's on my mind because it's the closest to price, meaning this is the day we traded yesterday and this is what we trading now. So I'm watching that. But prior to that, I want to see, is there a discount PD array that we can trade to prior to getting there? Right. And yes, it is. There's a daily fair value gap there. OK. Are there any other um, discount PD arrays? Right. Yes, there is. It's a daily wick right there. Since this wick and this wick are right there together, I'm not annotating both. <clears throat> I'm just annotating the most recent. Right there. Right. So that's one of the ones that I was watching right there. I'm just annotating the most recent. Right. Is there another discount PD array that's there? Yes, there is. There's a wick right here. But since it's so close to the daily low, I'm not annotating that one. I'm just going with the daily low. So I got my daily low there already marked. No need to mark this because it's in close proximity, right? I got my consequent encroachment of yesterday's wick. No need to mark this because they're in close proximity, right? And then I got my discount. Um, what's the name over there, right? So there are the PD arrays that, that's on my radar, Right there, what's that? One, two, three, four. Well, actually, I had five. I said four, but I had five because I forgot about the daily low. Right? So one, two, three, four. Those were the four. And then my daily low was the um the fifth one. Right? Um your mic is Yvette, your mic is on. Oh, oh yeah, somebody mic is on. Oh, okay. I didn't know what that was. I, I kept hearing stuff, but I was zoned out. Okay. Um, so that's our those are our daily key levels that we're looking at. We want to see how price reacts to it, right? Now, you know, say so if you want to go down to the four hour, right? You can go to the four hour. Now the daily has given us our information we want to know. The four hour isn't doing a whole lot, right? The four hour not doing a whole lot. But if you look at the four, like if the four hour had done a lot, if you look at the four hour, right, and then you go in and look at the um, the same stuff we're looking at, right, we have like these wicks, is, you see how it's lining up with stuff we already got marked, no need to mark it, right, we already got our old weekly hot air, so you just keep in mind, okay, the consequent encroachment of this wick is right around the old weekly high. Not marking it out. You know what I'm saying? I, I keep in mind, I got a weekly hot air, an old weekly hot air. The consequent encroachment of that wick is there. That's a, you know what I'm saying? That's a PD array. Right? You already know that's an important PD array because once we broke above that, that gave us this um, bullish breaker right here because we came down and took out that low. Right? We got a bullish breaker right there in line with that. Not even paying attention to the breaker, but since that weekly high is there i know that it's some kind of pd array over that of some importance right and so not marking that right there okay um we got our key levels from the daily still on there get down to the 15 minute right so now we're down here in the weeds now right we're down here in the weeds now this is when we're looking for our um our um range right all right this is when we're looking for our range okay looking at our chart right 
looking at our chart, this let me mark 9:30. All right. That's 9:30 right there. Okay. That's the 930 open right there. Okay, so watching price, right? I start watching price at 830. Pretty for real, for real. So let's go here to 830 right there. Alright. Let me do it like this right here. To make it easier on the eyes. Make it easy on the eyes. So we're gonna put 0830. To zero nine thirty, and then we're gonna put zero nine thirty to twelve. And we're gonna turn these other ones off. Okay, so the green is when I start watching price, and the red is when I um. Am looking to trade like from 9 30 to 12. Okay. So looking at price. All right, looking at price. Can somebody identify um what would be the um Dealing range from the time I start watching price. What would be the dealing range from the time I start watching price? What would be from the time I start watching price? Right. What would be our dealing range? Hello, it's me. Uh, would it be the high that you have marked and that um, low that's a doji? No, that's 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 price has already started engaging. Okay. Price has started engaging by that time, right here. You talk about here. Mm -hmm. Price has already started engaging at that time, right? I start watching here at this green at the start of this green right, green right here, right? Mm -hmm. So from the start of the green, right? From the start of the green, what would be the uh, dealing range? Here's a clue. It's already on the screen. Would it be the relative? What is it? Sell side relative, relative equal, equal lows. lows. Yep, mm -hmm. that's your low. Yes. Sell side at relative. the top. It would be uh, look like the buy side. Right you here. have more, yeah, yeah, the tall width, yes. Yeah, we got a single high and we got relative equal lows, right? And this it, this became, relative. at first, this was this, uh, this was your sell side, right? Let's back it up, right? At first, right? First, I watch the price here. Okay, so if I come here, like that when I first start watching price there right that's what it looked like right there when I first start watching price we got sell side right there right and I changed it to relative equal lows after we made a low right here you see what I'm saying so right now we got sell side right there all right sell side right there and we have a high over here right we got a high over there, but I'm not paying attention to it for right now because I'm waiting for to see what price does during the window when I'm watching price. OK, so when we here, we come up right and we wick above that high right there. Right. So when we come up and take that high out and reject down. Boom. I mark that as buy side liquidity. Right, because we just took somebody out of trades who were short and we just forced somebody into trades that wanted to break out. Right. And, you know, we ran some liquidity because we got this huge reaction off of there. Right. And plus this right here is the news embargo. This is the news candle. 
what do they do with the news candle? Manipulation, right? So what did this news candle do? All right, look at this right here. You see that high right there? All right, and you see this low right here under this consolidation, All right? We just cleared the board, right? We took out the buy side and we left this long, we took out the short-term sell side, but we left the real sell side, if you will. See what I'm saying? We went above this high, but we went above that high, right? But we left that low. The one that I already had marked right there. We left that low. Okay? Everybody tracking on that. Do everybody understand the significance of taking out this high but leaving that low? Hmm? That's a question. If you don't know what you say, I don't know. If if you if everybody good, just we good. I'm I'm not really sure of why it left the lows. Okay, so if whatever your bias is, like if you're bullish, right? If you're bullish, you want to buy below low. <clears throat> well, smart money wants to buy below lows, right? If you're bullish, if the if the if the the not your if. The buy program is intact and, and order flow is bullish. Smart money wants to buy below lows. Okay? So, since smart money wants to buy below lows, since we've determined that we are, remember we determined we were on the right side of a market maker buy model. So, the bias, the long, the high turn frame bias is bullish. So, if smart money wants to buy below lows, right, what's the first What's the most important part about the ICT concepts? Time, right? Right, time is the most important part of the ICT concepts, right? So we're getting ready, we're inside the kill zone, right? And we're getting ready to go into the New York trading session, right? We're getting ready to go into the New York trading session. We take out, we wipe out traders who were short, took them off the board, right? Forced traders into the market that want to go long, right? So we have engineered liquidity, right? We've engineered liquidity. People who were forced into the market long, their, their stops have been put down here. What in the, I just got locked up is going on here. Trade of you tripping, y'all get it. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Anybody that got forced in there on that wick up, their stops are now down here in the liquidity pool. That's already been that, that that price, right? Has not engaged it, right? Their stops are here. They're feeling safe right now, right? Some people got knocked out. They're PO'd right now because they think they were wrong. Okay? So now, you still have people under here who want to go short, and you still got stops under here that are protected for those that got forced in up here on that wick because they looking for a breakout. All right. So now that's the that that's the significance of not taking these stops yet because we've engineered more liquidity by forcing in longs there. Their stops are going here. We left these here and it's not time for the New York session to it's not time for the smart money to um engage yet okay does that, that make yeah. sense you tracking yes. okay yes. so we're still engineering liquidity and waiting for the time right 
We're just engineering liquidity and we're waiting for the time. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the meat back on the bone and so that we can walk through it. Okay, so we got our dealing range. Okay, we got our dealing range here and there, right? And so we're going into, we get here, right? This is 930. So we got our dealing range. This is our dealing range there and there. Okay, so we come into 930, right? And as we go into 930, we've already engaged our sell side. Okay, what do we say about when we come to a level what do we want to know? How what? Right? How far what? Once price comes to the level, what do we want to know about what price can do at the level? How what? How far will it go? How far will it go? Okay. Going back to our daily information, right? Now we're below CE of that wick. Right. How far below CE of that wick can price go? All right. What was our other daily information? Right. That we were looking at down here. All right. Remember, we had. Uh, wrong thing. Remember, we had like consequent encroachment of that wick that was near the daily low already right and then on the four hour we had consequent encroachment of this wick that was near the weekly um high already so we know there's um some pd arrays right there around that little wick there and it was another one a little further down which would have been below that low right Okay, and then let's go back to 15 minute. All right, so with that in mind, right, at 930, where do we come? We come down below the um, consequent encroachment. Let's go back up to the daily right. so that we can know where we are in price right there. Let's go back down to 15 minutes. All right. At 9 30, when we come in, we drop down. Remember, we had an area right here. I didn't mark it out, right? We had an area right there, and we know our other area was down here next to the low, right? At 9 30, so we come down, right? Dip down below that four hour level that we were watching. Got a nice rejection off of it. When we get that rejection like that, what's the first PD array that we're watching when we get that rejection like that? Hmm? Question. That's a question. What's the first PD array we're watching when we get that rejection like that? No, not the SIBI. Right? This when we get this rejection right here. What's the first PD array we're watching? Not, like our our anticipatory reactionary points are below us, right? So what's the first one we're watching in the, in our discount PD array? Right when we get that wick, it, it can be the top side or the bottom side. But when we get a wick like that, what's the first thing we're watching? Come on. I ain't heard nothing from Thomas. Thomas, say something. Thomas. No, not right here. What's the first hey. thing we're watching? Hey, Tim. What's happening? Who that is? Sonia. Sonia. What's up, Sonia? What's the first thing we're watching when we get that wick there? Right? Remember? I'm just going mm -hmm. to take, gonna take a, stab a stab at it. it. Um, um, would it be consequent, consequent, consequent encroachment? There you go. There you go, right? Because remember, we had we had a consequent encroachment here that we was watching. When we dip below it, we say how far below that consequent encroachment. Let me go and put it on the chart, 
right? Remember, we had a four-hour wick right here that we was watching, right? We had a four-hour wick that we was watching. When we come to that consequent encroachment, we say, how far below that can we go? We can go here, right? We can go here. These are different areas. We can go there. These, this the new day opening gap. I was like, I ain't worried about that right now. These are all the things that we can come to, right? And when we come below it, we get this strong rejection. So now that we got that strong rejection, right? These are off the table until we violate this consequent encroachment here and take out <clears throat> this low. You see what I'm saying? Y'all tracking? All right. Everybody tracking with that? Everybody good with that? Why is that? Can somebody explain why that is? Right? <clears throat> Once we got this strong rejection off of that discount PD array, right? Now, this strong rejection is telling us that this low this low should be protected by this PD array right there. All right? Can somebody explain why that is? I'm listening. Take a stab at it. Take a stab at it. Don't be scared. Prices has shown it doesn't want to go any further down. And that um that's true. But when price shows that it doesn't want to go down, that means that we're in what? We're in a what? Price is showing you that it don't want to go down. Price is respecting discount PD arrays. That means that, that that we are in what? Is it a buy model? Buy. We already know we're on the right side of the buy model. We're in a buy what? Buy is right. Hmm. Starts with a P. Program. 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 Yes, very good, Kashai. Very good, Tish. We're in a buy program, right? So if the buy program is intact, when we come down to a discount PD array and get a rejection like that, right? Now we're expecting the discount PD arrays to hold because the buy program is intact. OK, so since the buy program is still in tech, right, we've come down, we've engaged liquidity in our dealing range. Right. We come down. At 930, we dip down like below this low again, and then we get a strong rejection off of the discount PD arrays that we're watching. So now at that time, we're looking at consequent encroachment of that wick. And that low being safe. OK, now that we got all that together on there. Right. We're watching price. Our entry time frame is the one minute. OK, our entry time frame is the one minute. So here we are. <clears throat> here we are on the one minute time frame. Right. So on the one minute time frame, when we came down. Right. Remember, this was our. Um, for our consequent encroachment, right? And so we're sitting here and we're hanging out around that four hour consequent encroachment, around that old weekly high, around that old breaker over there, right? And we're engineering more liquidity, right? We're engineering liquidity, okay? So remember how price delivers. Right. How does price deliver 
Remember we talked about it yesterday, right? How does price um is two ways price delivers, right? What's the two ways price deliver? Somebody unmute and give it to me. Consolidation, expansion, retrace, reverse, deliver. It will it be reverse, retrace, retrace and deliver. deliver. All right. And then what's the second way? Consolidation, expansion, retrace, deliver. Yes. Right. So if you're bullish, your best entries are going to come here with this one. If you're bullish or bearish, right? Your best entries are going to come here, right? But if you understand your best entries can come here, you can identify this to make your entry. If you understand you're in what part of the power of three, what part of the power of three is going to allow you to take full advantage of this right here. We talked about it last night. What phase of the power of three is going to allow you to take full advantage of this? The manipulation. The manipulation phase of the AMD, right? So the manipulation phase of the AMD Right, it's gonna allow you to take full advantage of this. Okay, so when we had our dealing range, right, that was our high, this was our low, right? We're bullish. Where is price right now? Right? Where are we right now? We're below, right? Our low, right? What time is it? We are after 9:30. Right. After 930. So this move down right here. If you're bullish, we've come into the sell side of our deal of our dealing range. Right. So we get into our sell side and we're bullish. So right now in our mind, we're thinking we're where. Right. Where are we thinking we are? Right now in our mind, if we get down below our low and start to engineer liquidity, where do we think we are? Manipulation. We're in the manipulation phase of the AMD. All right. So since we're in the manipulation phase of the AMD, what are we anticipating? We are anticipating price that price is going to consolidate expand reverse retrace and deliver that's what we're anticipating right but since we know that we're in the manipulation phase and we're anticipating that now we can Look for this to give us a better entry. So if you look here, we got a consolidation right there. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, y'all. I hit the wrong button. Right? We got us a consolidation. Do anybody know what this is right here? What is that right there? That Sibby right there. Did the I first that? recession, the first Fed value gap presented after 9.30. Yep. Uh, I really thought there was a volume imbalance in there. There's no uh, there's no volume imbalance. I thought there was a volume imbalance there, but it's not. So let me price that right. right. I thought it was a volume imbalance there. when I, When I looked at it on the chart, had it squashed up, it looked like it was a volume balance there, but it's not. Uh, what's the low on, I mean, the close of that is 24 even, and the close of that 
is 20. There is. Am I tripping? Oh, no, open. I need to look at the open. The open of that 24 even. Oh, no, there's not. Okay. All right. So that's the first of session, right? Free value gap right there. Okay. So we have, um, I had this marked out, but I guess, did I delete it? I guess I did. I guess I deleted it. Okay. I deleted it. But as this was printing, right? As this was printing, I, I'll just give you a little tip real quick before we get into this. As this was printing here, since I'm, I'm anticipating price to go up and I'm looking for a better entry, right? When we came over here, when we traded up above this right here, right? I mark this out, right? Watch and see how price. Uh, once we, if we can get back above this and use it as support, right? So then, when we came back down and we made a lower low right there, once we traded back above this candle here, I mark that, right? Want to see if price can get back above that? And use it as um, as support, okay. And then um, once we came down, right, and dip below that low again, right there. Now I'm watching that to see if price can get back above it and use it as um, support. Does anybody know why I was watching those levels to see if they can be wet? Any takers? Why wouldn't it be accumulating if it's consolidating there? It it is. When whenever it's consolidating, it's accumulating. No takers on that. Is it because it's making higher, um, lower highs? Mm -mm. What What am I marking out? Each time I marked it out, what was I marking out? When I marked it out here, what is this right here? That's the opening. Open of what? What kind of candle is this? Of a bearish, can of a down close candle. Yeah, opening of a down close candle. Open of a down close candle. Open of a down close candle. All right. So if price is going down and we get back above a down close candle, we're anticipating a down close candle to act as what? Act as a what? A potential what? Order block? A, poten a potential order block. Right? So if price if price gets back above that potential order block and it starts to support price, then that order block would be our what? Hmm? That order block would be our what? Y'all need a clue? It would be what we need to expand. Mm -mm. I'm typing that now. Oh, that's change the state of delivery. That'll be our change in the state of delivery. All right. If we get back above that um, down close counter and it starts to support price, it'll be our change in the state of delivery. Okay. Get it? Got it good? All right. So that's why I'm watching, right? Every time we make a new low, okay, boom, we made a new low. Now I'm watching this one. Up, oh, we made a new low. Now I'm watching this one. All right. And then you see here, once we got there, boom. That's our change in state of delivery. We hit it. We rally up, right? We get back up, what? Above these highs right there. And then now 
we're coming into let's do it like this right here remember what's the most important part about ICT concepts hmm? what's the most important part about ICT concepts time, time. very good time so we are okay. Where's my oh there it is. All right, now we are we hit our change state of delivery and we rally up here and now we're going into our macro time macro window right we get into our macro window okay now we get into our macro window and inside our macro window right what happens halfway through our macro window right what is that right there halfway through our macro window what is halfway through our macro window from 950 to 1010 what happens right here that's the start of what hmm that's the start of what <laughs> the next hour very good Kashaya it's the start of a new hour when we come into a new anything, right, price is subject to do what? What is subject to happen if price, when price goes into a new anything, what do we watch for? The Judas swing or fake move? Manipulation, Judas swing, fake move, stop runs. We anticipate a Judas swing, we anticipate manipulation, right? What do we have sitting here? What do we have right here? And what do we have right here? Right. So what do we have sitting here? Hmm. What do we have sitting there? Swing low. Swing low. What's below a swing low? Order block. No, what's below a swing low? What rests below a swing low? Liquidity. Sell side liquidity. All right. Very good, Thomas. Sell side liquidity is resting there. When we when price comes to a level, what do we want to know? How far what? How far it'll go below that level. So what do we have down here? Change in state delivery. What do we have down here? First presentation, fair value gap. Today, we had medium impact news at 10 o'clock. On this 10 o'clock candle right here, soon as this 10 o'clock candle opened, price spiked. Boom! Quick, hard, fast. Bow! Went straight down to where? The first presentation fair value gap. Went right down to the first presentation fair value gap. Boop! Instantly. Instantly went right down there to the first presentation fair value gap, right? Just below consequent encroachment of the first presentation fair value gap. Yeah, hold on one second. Yo. Oh, yeah, we hunting hawks this weekend. <laughs> I'm actually on a I'm actually on a on a, on a call right now with the uh with the Discord. Yeah, yeah. I uh No, 
next Friday, I got to get it from Junior. I don't know. I got to get it from Junior. But I'll hit you back as soon as I get finished with this call. All right. Uh, yeah, so right down to that first presentation, Fair Value Gap. And what do they use news for? Right? What do they use news for? They use news to manipulate price, right? We're coming into 10 o'clock. What do we anticipate going into a new hour, going into a new session, going into a new anything? We anticipate manipulation, right? So when we see the manipulation and it comes down to an anticipatory reactionary point and it gives us this rejection right there, now, you're stalking a entry, right? So what is this right here? What kind of candle is this right here that ran down there? This is a what? A down close candle, right? So what are we watching? We're watching that. Why are we watching that price right there? Because we're anticipating that price to be what? A order block? Yes, an order block, but we want that price to act as what we want the counter to act as an order block, but we're looking for that price to become what? Support. Mm -hmm. What do we got right here? What happened oh, on the last time? Stated delivery. Exactly, because price was going down. Right? Price was going down. It hit our anticipatory reactionary point, a very key one, the first of session. And it was used during the news time. It wicked down there, boom, right to our first in session fair value gap and wicked off of it. Oh, I see what you're doing. Now I'm watching this price. I want to see that act as the change in state delivery, right? So we're watching that price there and we want to see that act as the change in state of delivery, right? So price went up there and Tap the buy side, right? It went up there and tapped the buy side. Looked like he got one tick above. 80, even. Yep, went one tick above the buy side and then ran back down, right? Closed there and then price traded down. Tapped that sell side one more time, right? Pulled down. Where did it pull down to? Once it tapped that sell side one more time, right? We see here, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. So, you know, see there, price could not get to consequent encroachment of this wick, right? Because it stopped where? At that old change in state of delivery, right? This right here was what? A news wick. Wick down there, manipulating price out. This came back down, unwilling to get the consequent encroachment of that wick, right? Then, Price came back again, right? Did not get the consequent encroachment of this wick, right? Why? Because it can't get past this down close candle, right? This down close candle is acting as support, right? Every last one of these candle bodies right here are closing above the halfway point of this down close candle. Every last one of them. It can't get past this down close candle right there. Unwilling to get to consequent encroachment of that wick right there. Showing exceedingly bullishness, right? It's exceedingly bullish, right? Then when you get a down, when you get a wick that's inside this down close candle, right? Still can't get to the, well, it might've touched it on that one. What's this low right here? 49.25, it did. It touched it to the tick. 49.25 to the tick of consequent encroachment of that. Remember what I said. When you when the algorithm is doing it, it's going to be very precise. Came right there to 49.25 to the tick. Okay? Then we get back above the order block. Trade back down one more time. Can't make it to consequent encroachment of that wick right there right and then it's off to the races boom pang out right well tim 
how would you trade that? I would trade it like over here at this time. I took a trade off of this consequent encroachment. I think I got stopped out over here somewhere. And then I took a trade off of, I mean, off this change in state delivery. I took a trade off of this change in state delivery. Then I got stopped out over here somewhere in profit. And then I took a trade off of this um, change in state delivery here. So that order block and that order block right there. And um, yeah, that's the one there off of that one. Right there. Okay. So this one over here, that was the one over there when I was um, in the, right, I was, when I was like, I was watching these here and I was looking at some stuff on the 15 second here when I was like, I was watching these different candles. We traded above there. I took some off of a 15 second there and then I got out there, right? Took it there, got out there, and then I took another one here off of the um, order block there. Took it there, I got out, got stopped out there. That was the one account when I was trading. Now I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm happy with that. I, I'm done for the day. I'm finished, right? And then when I saw this one over here, and that was based off of. Remember when I told you about um, we had wick down. Wick down to the first presentation. I was watching that order block right there to change state of delivery right there. Here. Right. So when this counter here came down into that, right, I put one on there. Boom. When that counter came down to it, then we stayed below it. And so when we went back up. When we went back up to it here, I put another one on right there. Right. As soon as we as soon as we boom. As soon as we went back above it, I put another one on there. Then I took one off at that high right there since I had two, right? I took one off at the high right there since we since I had two. And then I had my um, take profit up here at this high. But once we traded above that high right here, I tripped my stop up. I, I thought I was putting it at the high of this fair value gap, but I see I put it up a little bit higher right here. Now I can see that I moved it a little bit. I was eyeballing it and it ended up right here at the high of that um at the open of this down close candle right there All right either way it would have went it would have got me out either way but i put my stop there and got um taken out and profit there but my profit target was there All right so um and the only reason why i, I know gang gang i know y'all know what's up but the only reason why i did that is because I got a surprise for you all. I'm recording this and I'm going to put it on the YouTube channel later. <laughs> it is going to be it's going, man. it's going to be a public video. So that's the only reason why I put them executions up there because y'all don't understand the the foolishness that I got to put up with in my comments and in my DMs from people who you trade ICT and you you do 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 ever do 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 uh and that's just how they sound in my head <laughs> now um do anybody got any questions on this right here we we talked about like all the different things and that's how and this the reason why I want to show that as far as like when I was like Tim how would you have traded that is because y'all know that fair value gaps is my go to entry right but when you understand what price is doing right this was the fair value gap entry that happened on a news candle I'm not going to pretend like I, I was waiting down here but when the news was coming up, I said, I want to see what the news does. And when the news gave me, it went to my key levels that I'm watching. Now I'm looking for my opportunity to get long below the sell side. This is my this is my sell side here. Right. This is where smart money is buying below that level there, that 20 354 smart money is buying below there. 
So when the algorithm did something here, I'm looking for opportunity to buy below the low. You don't have to just trade a turtle soup and just go long soon as it hit the low and guess where to put your stop. You can find opportunities to buy below the low. When you hear Michael say buy below the lows, it don't just mean put my limit down there and, and get me in. Look for an algorithmic way of entering below the low. Right. Every I entered over here on some 15 second stuff. Where was it? Below my low. Right. I entered over here off of this right here. Where was it? Below my low. Right. I entered. I entered on this one here. There. Right. But it was relatively close to my low. I'm looking for opportunities to get it. It didn't give me what I wanted below my low here but it's right there near my low right any questions i think everybody good all right man that's it hopefully hopefully um this help hopefully this was helpful remember god dog it what am i grabbing hopefully this help was helpful remember if you understand we sprinting man we sprinting now. If you understand what price is doing, you can engage the market with confidence and with algorithmic um, backing of your concepts. Right? If you understand what price is doing, and you and that's why I like to know everything because you see today I was executing off of order blocks. And I was executing off these order blocks because of the change in the state of delivery, right? But if I didn't know what an order block was, I didn't know what an order block job was, I didn't know what a change in state of delivery was, I wouldn't have been able to execute then, right? So there's nothing wrong with having one part of the concepts that you focus in on. It just means that you would have fewer opportunities to make entries. All right. Breakers were breaking today. <laughs> and so that's why I like to understand all the concepts so I can engage, you know what I'm saying? Like at, at I'm not limited to cause the, the way my mind operate, I need to have options, you know what I'm saying? But I'm about to start running my mouth and it's already long, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. That's it. Till the next time I decide to jump on Al Gore's internet. Y'all be safe out here in these trading streets, man. It's your boy Aranya Grande, aka Big Spider. Here, here, man. Gone, man.